to showcase how many hours we spent in each category like this. We could separate this and, you know, divide it into not just today's tasks, but the last week, right? So that any of these tasks, if they have a time associated to it on Notion calendar, automatically are going to have a time tracked setup that coincides with your calendar without needing to pay for a third party solution. Let's keep it real. You've thought about time tracking before, and you've also thought about how to time track with Notion. But in every single instance of this occurring, you come to a point where uh, it's really, really hard. And the reason for that is because there is no easy, consistent way in order for you to uh, do the deed the deed of time tracking that is. But I'm gonna break down for you in this video one simple formula where you can take Notion and Notion Calendar in order for you to time track how much time you're spending on various tasks. Let's jump right into it. So first and foremost, if we go into Notion Calendar and we just take a moment to go to our calendar accounts right here, and then we can change that to connecting to Notion, you need to connect a specific database for all intents and purposes. I have a task database that already is allowed within Notion Calendar, so I'm just gonna go through and authorize it, right? Like this is this is the workspace and I have my tasks right here. Now, in order for this to work, what I need to do is essentially take any task that I have and drag it onto the calendar. As you can see within here, inside of Notion, we have a task or two that can be dragged on my calendar. So if we take a moment, and drag this record content services task onto my calendar and set it so that it is a 45 minute long task. You'll notice that inside of Notion, the time here changes from just a general on that date, since it was in this all day section, that's kind of signifying that it didn't have a time, to 4.30 to 5.50 p.m. Now, what we can do on top of that is take another task and let's fill out the rest of this hour, shall we? Just by dragging this. Right, so then we have another one. That's another few minutes here. So you can see, I also have it sorted in my daily planner that it's like by time. So the one that's secondary on this list is secondary in the calendar too. Now, what I did was I made a very nice formula. If I open this up and you'll notice that we have a little bit of a time tracking formula that I'm gonna recreate for you right here that signifies in minutes how long of a time we have between the beginning and end time inside of this task. So first we're gonna write date between, and then we're gonna put start, which will be the date start entity here. Then we're gonna get our property. So for me, that property that's connected to Notion Calendar as a time or date entity is going to be called time. And then after the parentheses at the end of date start, we're gonna put a comma, then we're gonna put date end, then we're gonna write time again after pressing enter, and then entering this. All right, so as you'll notice if I click on date between, it's asking us to put the first date, right? So like now with this date, and then in what interval are we breaking it up? So we have to put another comma, and I'm gonna put it in minutes. All right, and then from there, we essentially have the time difference between the two. Not lie, I messed up and incorrectly put date end. It needs actually to be the inverse of it. So I'm just deleting the text and writing date end and then date start right here. You can do that with formulas. You can just change the name of the function as I just typed it out. So it's gonna be date between parentheses, date end parentheses, the property of the time, close the parentheses, comma, then do the same thing with date start, another comma, and then minutes, and then close the thing off with a final parentheses. Now this is going to essentially be done in minutes. What you can do from there, if you would like to, is track this in any way that makes sense to you. So what I can do next is I could duplicate this and delete the end to say, like time tracking numbers, right? And I could essentially grab the round function and do time tracking divided by 60 so that it would essentially round to the percentage of an hour. That's kind of one of my favorite ones. Now, how do we necessarily make this accurate? Because as you can see, it's gonna be one, but if I just did time tracking divided by 60, it would be 0.75. However, it gets a little bit weird when <laughs> you end up having uh, longer ones. So you can do round or not, uh, it's up to you. 
Like say for example, this was a longer time period, it'd be till uh, 8.15 p.m. It would just be like 3.5775. So it's up to you what you want it in, but I kind of like breaking it up like this into two properties. But you also, if you wanted to, could just bracket all of this and divide it by 60 and then boom, you actually have one property and then you could delete this and then it'll just be time tracking in hours, all right? So that's how you could do it there. And then from here, what I could easily do is make a view. Like for example, if I go to like my completed task for the day, I could make this a table view and let's go right here. And then let's group this by tree, which for me is essentially like the different uh, like calendar or category of work that I have. And we can group it by that. And from a property standpoint, I just wanna see the time duration or time tracking in hours. And then I wanna see the time that it was done at. And obviously that good old checked off property. And then we could sort it by the time tracking in hours and then do it by descending. So the highest would be at the top and we could make it so that it's just like all the tasks for the day, regardless of uh, whether it was checked off or not. So you can see right here, let's showcase all the different tasks for the day. We could sum these to showcase how many hours we spent in each category like this. We could separate this and you know divide it into not just today's tasks, but the last week, right? So that any of these tasks, if they have a time associated to it on Notion Calendar, automatically are going to have a time tracked setup that coincides with your calendar without needing to pay for a third party solution. Literally just use the formula on top of the Notion calendar and here you can time track without needing to do anything but time block, which has always been my favorite thing to do. However, the only way to do it reasonably easy is with a product called Time Navi that I found a while ago. But as you'll notice here, in order for you to do it in a way that makes sense, where you can actually change the time frame that you're looking at, or even look at historical data beyond this month, you have to pay $10 a month pretty much to get the right thing. Seven and a half kind of works, but a one year historical access. I mean, we're looking at like products that pretty much are gatekeeping the fact that there's no great way to do this. So this solution allows you to make this inside of Notion with a real time tracked set up disconnecting with your Notion calendar and Notion. If you like this video and want to see more cool tips on how to improve your skills using Notion, make sure to check out videos like this one right here.